100 American dollars is what we have to spend today in Montreal, Canada. I'm going to show you three meals, activities, transportation, and a hotel, all for just $100. Now I know what you're thinking. Isn't the average price per night in a hotel in Montreal $151? Yes, but we're going to be staying in a much more low-key hotel tonight. I'm Will, the channel is Sprout, Let's get into it. Okay, welcome to Montreal. So if you haven't already figured it out, we are downtown and if you need a hint, just listen to the construction or the traffic right behind me. So when I did this challenge about a month ago in Vancouver, 100 US dollars actually equaled 130 Canadian dollars, but the dollar has gone stronger since then. So now 100 US dollars only equals 125 Canadian. So I know $5 might not sound like a big difference, but it might be the difference between eating dinner and starving. Just kidding. But before we go and explore, the first thing that we need to do is go and pick up this. This is an STM one day fare pass, which gives you unlimited access to as many bus and metro rides as you need in 24 hours. You can go and pick this up at any metro station that's conveniently located near you in Montreal, and the cost is $10 flat for the entire day. So once you get your pass, very easy, you simply tap it and boom. We're in. Okay, our first stop today is going to be getting some breakfast. And because we already spent $10 on transportation, we're going to be keeping this one cheap. So we are here at St. Vitor Bagel for breakfast and we are about to get just over a dollar bagels. I don't know if you guys have ever heard of the famous Montreal bagel, but <laughs> that's where it comes from. That is the OG, original Montreal style bagel. So I don't know why I'm still talking. Let's go get some. Okay, two bagels acquired. Total price, $2.10. That's it, no tax, no nothing. Okay, so I got two bagels. One, the original sesame, which you have to get if you come for a bagel in Montreal. And then I spice it up and got my own, which is a pumpernickel. Seeing as how different uh, heat-wise both of these bagels are, you always wanna get the sesame because the sesames are always scorching hot when they come out of the oven. But before I eat these, I have one little surprise left. It's almost rude of me to only go to St. Vitor Bagel, so I also got a sesame bagel from Fairmount. To be totally honest, even though this is a really safe city to live in, there's an ongoing war, and it's not a violent war, it's a bagel war. The city is pretty much split between people who either love St. Vitor or people who love Fairmount. I'm personally a St. Vitor guy, but if you're going to come to Montreal, you owe it to yourself to try both. Fairmount and St. Vitor. They almost look the same, but these are the two most iconic Montreal-style bagels you'll find in the whole city. And me, definitely a St. Vitor guy. Now, to see the city a little bit better, let's head over to our first activity. This is Mount Royal Park. This is the biggest park in all of Montreal, and it's located right next to downtown. So it's actually really cool that we have our own city park. But something that's even cooler about Mount Royal Park is it was designed by a man named Frederick Law Olmsted. Now, I don't know if that name rings a bell, but let me give you a hint. He was actually the same guy who designed Central Park. Okay, so I've been trying to find a place to stay at, but it hasn't been easy. I know we only have 100 US dollars, and like I said at the beginning, the average price per night is above that, so there aren't that many choices here. So the only one I can find is a hotel that's actually right next to the highway, outside of the downtown area. And it's a hotel that my family and I used to eat brunch at a lot when I was really young, but it's honestly my only choice at this point. 79 Canadian dollars seems to be the cheapest option. Okay, looks like I have no choice. I booked it. Now let's go get some lunch. Our next stop behind me is for lunch and we are going to a pastry shop called Mami Clafouti. Now the thing that you have to understand about Montreal is that we are the only predominantly French-speaking region in Canada and 
North America, actually, for that matter. And because of that, it's a no-brainer that we are very heavily influenced by the French. So they left us with a lot of things, as you're gonna see in a little bit, the architecture being one of them. But another thing that we all are so thankful for is the food. So right now, yes, we're gonna do as Quebecers and French people will do, and we're gonna have pastries for lunch. Okay, let's go. To make it even more European, perhaps, I'm gonna have this croissant sitting on a uh, park bench in the nice, beautiful park right next to the store. I got a pistachio croissant. They rarely, rarely make these anywhere else in the city. So in total, this croissant cost me $5.06. So between breakfast and lunch, I'm only spent $8.16. Oh, simple math. And once you're done eating your pastries, don't be afraid to explore this area. I don't know if you see these colored houses here, but this is actually one of the most Instagrammable places in the entire city. This whole area, also if you keep walking a couple blocks behind me, is called the McGill Ghetto. So it's essentially where everyone who goes to McGill lives because the rent is cheap. It's in a prime location in the city. So take like 10, 15 minutes after you finish eating and come check this place out. So now that we're in the old port of Montreal and I want to take you to a museum or something, but since we can't because of the COVID restrictions here in Montreal, I'm going to take you on a little history tour of the oldest part in Montreal. Okay, number one right behind me is Notre Dame Basilica, which is one of the largest basilicas in all of North America. If I just turn around behind me, I have this statue right over here, and that is the statue of Paul de Maisonneuve, who is the founder of Montreal. Montreal was founded in 1642, second oldest city in North America, and to commemorate that, they made a statue for our boy Paul over there. Deserving? I think so. And finally, St. Paul Street, the oldest street in Montreal, named after the man that I just spoke about, our city's founder. On this street, you can find souvenir shops, up-and-coming restaurants, clubs, and even an incredible market. Okay, so now we've moved away from all of the touristy areas in Montreal, and we're beside the highway to check into the hotel, which is right behind me. Now I'm trying to think of why exactly this hotel is one of the cheapest in the city. And I think it's probably because it isn't really near anything that a tourist would know to visit in Montreal. But in my opinion, this place is actually located next to a couple of hidden gems in the city. But I will explain that a bit later. Right now, let's go check it. How are you? About to check into the room. Four sixteen. Okay, grow up, grow up. Oh, wow! That is actually not as bad as my parents were expecting it to be. <laughs> All right, quick tour. So here we have a bathroom, shower, toilet, me, closet with a safe. Oh, oh my God, after moving all day. Oh, this is gonna be nice. Okay, so for one of the cheapest hotels in the city, this is actually a pretty nice stay. So I have one stop left and that is dinner. But since we've only spent $8 in total on both breakfast and lunch and our day's activities, I think we can pig out a little bit for dinner. So if I'm doing calculations, we have $97.16 have been spent, and we have about $125 that we can spend. So 125 minus 97.16, we have $27.84 that we can spend. That is a lot of money for dinner. All right, let's go eat. Okay, so we are at the Orange Julep right now for dinner, and this is one of the most well-known after hours grub spots for Montrealers. So actually a lot of people who come to Montreal don't know about the orange julep despite how big and obvious it may seem. It's not well located but if you look right here behind me that's the hotel and this is the OJ's so it actually worked out really well. You'll actually find this place to be packed during the entire summer at pretty much any hour of the day. I've driven by here at 11 a.m. packed. Right now 7 o'clock packed. 
at 4 a.m. packed. So people know, they know where to go. And since it's so busy and I have nowhere to sit, we're gonna head back to the hotel room and we're gonna go and eat all this food. So I kind of abused my privilege and I spent 20 bucks on dinner. I got a bottle of water, two all dress hot dogs, and of course, the legendary poutine. All of this was about 20 bucks. And there we go. This is our full day of spending. And now since we have extra money because breakfast and lunch were really cheap, we're gonna end it off at the strip club. No, I'm just kidding. YouTuber starves himself all day so he can get some action. <laughs> Okay, so I think we learned two major things from this challenge. Number one, even though Montreal is one of the major Canadian cities, unlike Toronto and Vancouver, you actually can survive on just $100 a day here. That being said, if you wanna get the most out of staying in Montreal, you probably wanna be staying in a more touristy area. Number two, a challenge like this is really fun. Next time you travel, don't just book a hotel and live normally in a different city actually take the time to do challenges when you travel travel unconventionally because when you do that you learn the most about yourself and about the world and you become a more well-rounded more empathetic human being and that is exactly how you one you're going to find yourself and two how you are going to positively make an impact on this world and with that if you like this video please smash a like button and consider subscribing for more by clicking on my hopefully pretty face right over here. I'm Will, the channel is Sprout, and it's a mindset. I'll see you guys next week.